and it's three minutes after six. So, I'm just looking, making sure. Yeah, I think I got it all together. All right. Um, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the first meeting of the RDAP in 2021, the year that will solve all of our problems. And uh, look, I can dream. And uh, we have tonight, I think a fairly, it's not a light exactly agenda, but it shouldn't take us forever to get through it. It's really a planning meeting, I think as much as anything. But let us start with our introductions. And I have finally, after almost a year, figured out how to do this, and there's like a whole list of people on the slide. I'm just going to go down that and ask you to introduce yourselves, please. Tyler. Good, e good evening, Hello? everyone. Hello? Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Tyler Allen, um, DC, DCW, mm. uh, or sorry, <laughs> um, uh, sorry, Family Services Division, uh, Adolescent Service Director. A little out of it tonight. <laughs> Jessica. Jessica. Hi, everyone. I'm just un unmuting. unmuting. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> um, hi. Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, I'm Jessica Brown. I'm the managing attorney of the Public Defender Office for Chittenden County, and I'm an at-large member of this panel. Panel. Ah, okay. I can hear you now. Oh. oh. Yes, Chris. Uh, Chris Loris, please. You're. I don't know who it is, but someone's got a real echoey. If you're not talking, we should probably all mute. That's probably true. Chris, we had a hard time with that, but we know you're here representing Karen and Robin from the Crime Research Group, correct? Roger that, sir. Got it. Thank you. Curtis. Yes. How is everyone tonight? Curtis Reed from Vermont Partnership for Fairness and Diversity. I can only be with you for an hour tonight, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Susanna. Hello, I'm Susanna Davis, Racial Equity Director for the state here as an observer. Judge Grierson. Uh, good evening, everybody. Good to see everyone. Happy New Year. Um, I can only be with you for the same hour that uh, Curtis can. But um, I know there were a couple of you that were on the Justice uh, Reinvestment meeting yesterday. But for those of you who weren't, um, our leader, uh, Aton did a fantastic job in making the case as to why uh, the legislature should fund the work that we know needs to be done. I mean, Aton, I, I told you before, it was just uh, thank you. Son. It, was, it was really something to to hear, and it. Uh, and I told Aton, it made me uh, proud to be a member of the RDAP group, and that. He was our leader. It was it was that good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, wow. Uh, uh, Loretta Saki. Loretta, please. Hello, Loretta Saki. I'm with CSG Justice Center, uh, policy analyst, and I would echo Judge Gerson saying that, Eitan, we've talked separately, but you did an amazing job as per usual, and uh, definitely appreciate the work that's going into this. So really excited. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Madeline Dardo. Hey, folks. Madeline Dardo. I'm also a panel uh, policy analyst with the CSG Justice Center. Great. Elizabeth Morris. 
Hi, all. Elizabeth Morris, uh, Juvenile Justice Coordinator within uh, DCFSD um, and an observer here. And I also would like to echo, I was, I was listening into the Justice Reinvestment meeting and I was very happy uh, to see you on the agenda. And also you did a fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you. Pepper. Uh, James Pepper, uh, designee from the Department of State's Attorneys and Sheriffs. Now, Eitan, as I mentioned, you just have to make that same speech about 100,000 more times <laughs> in order for anyone to, you know, really, you know, digest what you were saying. But I think it was a great start. <laughs> <laughs> and it will happen. But <laughs> Believe me, I know you're already on the agenda for like six committees, I feel I like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. Sarah Friedman. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hi Sarah? there. Yep, Sarah Friedman, uh, also with the CSG Justice Center, um, with Madeline and Loretta uh, as an observer. And yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's hard to follow up, but echoing thanks to Aton for um, for attending the meeting and and really really representing RDAP well, and hoping that uh, to continue working with you all to um, to get these policies passed. Thank you. David, share. Yes, David, share with the Attorney General's office. And Eitan, we chatted briefly, but my thanks to you as well. Really excellent work and excited for the session. Yeah, thank you. Sheila. Sheila emailed and mentioned she's having trouble uh, finding a link. I'm gonna, I'm trying to get that to her all you're, you're gonna help her okay i'm here i'm here oh sheila <laughs> <laughs> sheila um linton she her um at large community member and the root social justice center representative thank you julio Julio Thompson, uh, Attorney General's Office, Civil Rights Unit. I'm not on the RDAP, but uh, I'm a big fan of your work, so I'm here to listen and chime in if needed, but probably not. Okay. Rebecca? Rebecca Turner, hopefully working with a better mic this time, so I don't sound like I'm coming from underwater. Uh, um, who am I? Defender General's designee, panel member, and um, guess not only should you be prepared to repeat that a thousand times over, as Pepper said, and that it was fantastic, that we all need to hear it over and over and over again because that is what we're all about, just dismantling and really trying to do st structural change. So here we are, Happy New Year. Thank you. Yeah. And Monica. Hi everyone, uh, Monica Weber. I'm with the Department of Corrections and I had the distinct pleasure of uh, following Aton yesterday after he made that uh, lovely and passionate um, uh, remarks around RDAP and um, I'm sure nobody was paying attention to me when I was talking, but I I would love to actually have the the written because I know I know you write down what you say, and I I just I would love to be able to read it and just absorb it more because it was just so powerful. Um, I'll I'll write it. It's actually in an outline form, but it's oh okay. Outline. Well, but my outlines are pretty filled in. I could yeah. Uh, well, um. Thank you all for swelling my head. Have a nice evening and uh, see you next month. But uh, <laughs> who have I forgotten? I'm looking at, oh, um, Representative Lalonde. Yeah, thank you. I just, just joined, just gonna listen in as I've been trying to do with your meetings. I really appreciate it, thanks. Okay, great. I think, I think we have everyone. No, all right. Eitan, no? your partner. Oh my God, my partner. Oh, this is really embarrassing and I'm not going to live this down. No, um, no, Scribner, I can't wait. Oh, oh, oh tomorrow's going to suck. Um, <laughs> Captain Scribner, could you please introduce yourself? I don't know who you are. <laughs> I'm Julie Scribner, uh, Captain with the Vermont State Police and Co-Director of Fair and Impartial Policing and Community Affairs 
with Aton, and I'm here uh, as proxy for Commissioner Sherling. Well, all right, that was fun. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Julie. Uh, okay, moving right along. Let's go to announcements. Does anyone have any that um, need to come out now? Um, the only thing I would say is I wanted to thank everybody for the support. It really, uh, particularly at this moment in history, um, it really bows me. It's been a hard few days, and just hearing the kindness from you all is really... Uh, it matters a lot. Thank you. Um, it's an honor to work with you. And I, that's a platitude, but I mean it deeply. I really do. Ah, uh, anyway, yes, David. David, can you talk about membership for us? Sure. So thank you. The statute that uh, created this panel is a little bit confusingly written in terms of the terms of each of us on the panel, but to the extent that it may be the case that anybody's term is expiring, this, and in particular, there's sort of two groups of people uh, that um, are appointed in different manners. One group is our community representatives, and the other group are the representatives of the various state agencies. Uh, I want to let folks know that it is the Attorney General's intention to reappoint the five current community members um, representing communities of color from around the state as it is, uh, states in the statute. Uh, so we'll make that formal. We'll send out letters in the next week or so. Uh, if you don't want to be reappointed, please let me know. No need to do that now, but you can email or call at some other time. Uh, and with respect to the members representing state agencies will probably send out a letter that makes it the default that you'll stay on just so that we don't have um uh you know some dead time or we haven't heard if, in case we don't hear back for a while we'll probably send something out that says unless we hear otherwise we will uh assume that x person who's currently serving it will remain the representative to the rdap so that's the plan going forward wanted to let everybody know that uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. Great. Thank you, David. Um, the other thing, and I just want to put this in here about that. I think this is actually, I'm really glad that the attorney general did this. It, whoever we would get in here now, there'd be a little bit of training that would need to happen, given that there are so many initiatives that we've sort of started that are actually underway. And that's really going to be difficult to do during a pandemic. Um, and several epidemiologists that I know, and yes, I actually know epidemiologists. Don't ask. Um, but they're talking about, we're, this really may look like early summer before we have anything like what used to be called normal. So that would be through the current legislative session. And it just feels like this is slightly weird, but at the same time, also it facilitates work and is productive. Um, you're about to hear about what's going on right now, and it's kind of exciting. And it does seem that it would be counterproductive to change up the cast of characters in the midst of change, which as you all know, was frankly a bit slow to get going. Um, and now it's going. And so I think that the attorney general, I don't want to put words in his mouth, is thinking that it might be a bad idea to interfere with the flow right now. And we're just going to cope and revisit this when it gets to a point that we can all be around each other and talk to each other without threatening each other's lives. So um, that's that. Any questions, comments, discussion? Okay, the next thing up um, is a discussion, uh, an update on the recent report that we submitted on the 1st of December. And Rebecca's going to lead off on that. Okay, 
Um, well, we, we've just talked a lot about the most recent meeting, which was yesterday, but let me start off um, with, I guess there was one other meeting or presentation that Aton um, did, and I, I was able to, I think, testify a we bit both? with Aton on that. Yep. That was uh, December 11th, right? Uh, December 11th. I'm just going back to my calendar, trying to find that. And I believe that was before the Joint Justice Oversight Committee. Is that right? It was. It was. And for those who may not be familiar with who is on the Joint Justice Oversight Committee, they are, of course, members of the state legislature. Um, and please, others on this call can correct me, but members from the Senate Judiciary, House Judiciary Committees, uh, Corrections and Institutions Committee, um, basically folks who are really focused on this area. And they um, they got to hear us uh, give a little bit of a, a summary and um, a lot of what Aton testified yesterday to a different, some overlapping members, but a different group yesterday, um, but sharing the same thing. I think there at the end of that, what's significant to share with this group is that Senator Sears indicated um, that it sounded like we should, um, we were suggesting drafting uh, language for a bill for this session on data collection, and we said yes, <laughs> and 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 um, and we again confirmed that it would. It, we have Connecticut as a model, and that was what the report um, indicated with the appendix. And so. My understanding, and Aton, you know, please, please add on, but that Senator Sears intended, uh, left that meeting on December 11th, asking um, Legislative Council uh, to start work drafting on legislation modeled on the Connecticut bill. Yes. Uh, and then others who are much more experienced on sort of the drafting, that, would, that was a December 11th date, right? I know, you know, the new session has officially started. We are seeing bills introduced. That data collection bill has not yet been introduced. No. Um, and based on Senator Sears' indication in late December or December 11th to do it, uh, Pepper, David, Julio, what's your, or Judge Grierson, what's your sense of a time frame um, when we could expect introduction of that bill? Uh, it's hard, it's hard to say. I know they have a drafting deadline in early February, but there's legislative kind of machinations to just put in a placeholder bill. Um, and of course, um, you know, they could just say there's going to be a racial disparities bill and give it a number and just kind of leave a subject line. So, um, obviously, you know, bills that pass before what's called crossover, which is usually, um, you know, the first week of March, it's the, it coincides with uh, town meeting day week. Um, you know, those are the bills that really advance through the legislative process in the first half of the biennium. So I would imagine that a bill will be introduced, testimony will be taken, and it will be passed uh, through one body, one chamber, um, uh, prior to town meeting day. Um, so that's the kind of initial s steps that have to happen. But that was very, that was very positive news. I, I think that was, from my perspective, the very best news we could have gotten on December 11th. Commitment we from Senator. I'm just Senate. gonna say that we were giddy. Rebecca and I were texting. We, like, <laughs> there's no other word for it, giddy. Well, after so much work has been put in. <clears throat> so then let's fast forward to the second, um, I think, touchdown with the legislature and more, which was yesterday's, which is where people who have sat in and listened to Aton testify, uh, that was before the joint, no, Justice Reinvestment two working group. group, working group, and others are much more uh, better positioned to explain who is in that group. Uh, but that is broader than just members of the legislature. Uh, that includes, um, you know, sort of cabinet level uh, uh, folks from the various executive agencies. Uh, my boss, the Defender General, Department of Corrections Commissioner. Um, is is um, DCF commissioner on there? I don't think so. No. 
Uh, Chief Justice Ryber of the of the Vermont Supreme Court was there. Uh, Judge Grierson. Judge Grierson was there, and Pepper and and David. I don't know if you were there. Of course, Sarah Freeman and Loretta here, and Monica, of course, testified yesterday, uh, instrumental in presenting materials related beyond the RDAPS report. But RDAP was part of that agenda, and Aitana again testified. There, I recall that there was some questions um, about funding and uh, funding and how to be efficient about it. Did we consider us? Uh, you know, recommendations as to how to fund this efficiently, um, given our spaghetti chart. <laughs> uh, Senator Sears, I also recalled, uh, expressed an interest in seeing if a, a ton or we could um, connect with Connecticut to invite them to go and speak. Um, and then I know that, uh, and maybe it was the other meeting, whether it was Representative Grad, uh, Senator Sears indicated that they were hoping, planning to have a ton back uh, to those particular committees, the Judiciary Committees in the Senate and the House, to again present on the report. So, And it's actually kind of interesting. This leads really well. Thank you. Because um, it turns out there was another meeting with House Judiciary on Friday of last week. And I was asked on Thursday if I could be there and of course you know yes and it was kind of a meet and greet but um representative grad indicated that she would be working with senator sears if i didn't get that wrong she's indicated that she would be working with senator sears on this legislation um she also indicated yesterday and this is something that we need to think about um now um, that Senator Sears' committee and her committee, House Judiciary, would like to meet with us. I mean, they want to come to one of our, our Zoom Apaloozas. And um, I think, given what Pepper, you're saying, and, and so that this should this is obviously going to happen likely sooner rather than later. Um, I did my best to say, like, not tomorrow night, please, because <laughs> I kind of wanted to give everyone a heads up that, you know, something was going to happen and not just suddenly have 30 people here that we didn't know and hadn't been prepared for. Um, but I would like to ask you all now, would you like me to issue basically a, what I would call a soft invitation only because I can't answer for them, but a soft invitation for next month's meeting, which will be on the 9th of February. Um, I would get specifics about what they're hoping to get from us, and I would certainly relay them to you. Um, and so my, I guess um, I'm proposing, even though I'm the chair and not supposed to, um, that somebody else can propose that I'm just thinking out loud that it would be nice to, in fact, write to them and say, how about next month, the 9th of February, between 6 and 8 p.m.? Anyone? Discussion? Um, this might be out of order, but... Uh, we have um, the former vice chair and ranking member of the House Judiciary Committee, and he might have some insight as to whether that would be tenable for you know to get those. It's 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 a big group, um, so yeah. He might. I'm happy. We'll Let him put him on. <laughs> we put um, you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's fine. Uh, I, I'm not. I wasn't the vice chair uh, ranking member. I'm, uh, okay. Uh, I'm not. I'm not this term because I'm on <clears throat> the uh, leadership team as a as an assistant majority leader. But in any event, still in the judiciary committee, and I I have talked to Maxine, and she has mentioned uh, this. And uh, having Zoom makes this a lot more doable for us to be able to jump onto a meeting. So I think extending that invitation uh, would make a lot of sense. 
So great. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Any other discussion from people and about this? I just said, this is Sheila. I just hi, think, it's, hi. Um, I just think it's a great idea because I create, I think it creates more accessibility for the public as well, that it's a set time for us where we all are scheduled already. And it's a set time where many people might know that we are meeting and be able to sort of carve that out of their night and be able to ask the questions and get the information that they need. So I would really encourage us to um, do that invite. Great. Okay. Um, so you want to vote? Somebody make a motion. I'll make a motion that we invite, um, are we inviting um, Representative um, Grad and Senator Sears? Is that what we're saying? Or are we saying the House Judiciary Committee um, folks? The two Judiciary Committees, House and Senate. Okay, so I um, invite us to invite the House and the Judiciary Senate to our next RDAP meeting on, I think you said maybe February 9th. 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 Yes. How's that? And Second. I'll second it. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. All abstentions? Got it. Okay. Motion's carried. And I will invite them. I will, I will work on that tomorrow morning and get that out. I will keep you in the loop as, uh, you know, as things go on to get specifics about what they might like want to talk about and so on and move things ahead. Um, so that will probably be our main uh, focus for next month. So just so you know that. That makes our next item that much more, um, I won't say urgent, but just something that we really need to be thinking about Although, depending on what happens with um, the Judiciary Committees next month, this may get um, put aside as well. I want to remind you, this, we're talking about next steps now. We're on to that second item of the agenda. Um, I want to remind us where we were before Act 148, which seems like, I don't know, several millennia ago. I think there were dinosaurs walking around. Um, we had decided to, as a group, to sort of work on the report that we did almost oh, just over a year ago for December 2019. We had talked about amplifying it, you'll remember, I think, um, that taking parts of it and really drilling down more deeply. Um, we had the metaphor, I, in my head, I remember it being David's metaphor, but of course it gets used a lot that it was a report from 30,000 feet. And we were sort of deciding that as a group, we should perhaps take sections of it and really get that down to maybe 5,000 feet. What I remember very, very clearly was Jessica adding at that moment that it would be likely that the consensus that we reached with our first report would probably disappear when we went further down into a deeper dive. and I. I'm not sure why I got stuck on that, but I kind of think that's true, and I think that that's interesting. Um, I think that's a really, I think that could make this actually a very interesting, um, not merely exercise, but product. Um, along with that, oddly, given the emphasis that was on data in Act 54, which you'll remember was the act that started our first report, um, we've already, I think, inadvertently amplified that report's concern with data. We just did a big, deep dive on data. I think we can kind of leave data for right now. I mean, I'm, I don't know about the rest of you. I'm kind of set for now. With, I mean, maybe, I don't know what's going to happen after we get those judiciary people in here. But, I, you know, for the moment, I'm all set with data. Um, so what I'm thinking here is, in a sense... That first part of, the re of that big report in December of 2019 is, in fact, done. Um, we've already done that. If we are really still thinking that we want to go back to that original report and amplify sections of it, 
And that's why I bring this up now. Um, we've done that work. We've sort of got a, a quote unquote clean slate. I say that very advisedly. Um, should we continue with that task? Um, and further, how do we do so if we decide to do so, given that the legislature may have needs of us, which may be revealed um, really quite soon? Uh, but I was just thinking that I wanted to bring that up now because it's important for us to, I think, protect that work product. A lot of work went into that first report. A lot of things that were in that report are actually now in the process of becoming. Um, I won't say because of us. I think it may be more of a, a zeitgeist kind of thing. But I won't say that we're not playing a role here. But I, there are things that are moving. It may, And that's why I sent it out to you all to, for tonight to look at, to consider to provoke some thinking about what you might think about next steps. So now I get to shut up and you get to think about next steps out loud. That's working. Hey, Tan, it's Rebecca. Yes. I'll, I'll start off with something actually a tiny step which is next steps being literally uh, an upcoming sentencing commission meeting date, uh, January 25th. Um, and uh, the agenda that we expect to be going out soon is just um, meeting with Pepper and, and Judge Zona, who's the chair of that commission, um, includes a, a discussion on the RDAP report just filed. Um, ah. and you will be heads up to this panel, you will be I'm anticipating invited by the chair to join and to discuss. So another, not just an opportunity to talk about that report, but again, and help me hear uh, those others on this panel can cite the statute specifically uh, to the extent that there is some overlapping work with the sentencing commission that's expected by the legislature. Um, I think this is sort of a, a beginning of that, right, Pepper? Yeah. Dan, David? What, yeah. What, what I would add is that actually our December first RDAP report um, was uh, the 2020 version uh, was going. The audience was the Joint Justice Oversight and the Vermont Sentencing Commission because the Vermont Sentencing Commission has some follow up work. If there are specific legislative recommendations around changing sentencing practices or developing sentencing guidelines that could alleviate some of the racial disparities that we've identified um, in the report. I think it might be it, it potentially, I mean, I don't know how much the report got into, got in, our report got into that, but the Sentencing Commission has a supplemental report based on our report that's due February 26th. So, <clears throat> Yes, I, we were on a call yesterday uh, with Rebecca and the chair of the Sentencing Commission, and we remembered that uh, aspect to Act 148, and we decided that we should probably invite uh, you, Aton, or other members of the panel as well to the next Sentencing Commission meeting to discuss kind of next steps with, with our 2020 report. Um, and that next meeting is... Uh, January 25th from 1 to 1 30 to 3 30. Um, nap time. Nap time. <laughs> yeah. And again, that's a, that's a February report deadline for the sentencing commission. But as Pepper just said, there's a lot of overlapping um, thinking ideas on reform suggestions that are being um talked about. And, and on that agenda, Jen, Jenem, again, others on this call who are on that commission not yet sent out finalizing it, but it's new business. Again, what we're talking about, areas where we think could have the greatest impact. And, and of course, the Sentencing Commission is broader than, than addressing uh, specifically racial inequities. Uh, but, you know, there it there's some overlap. It is a public meeting, though, so every, anyone here who's interested um, just know that date. And it's, uh, again, January 25th. What time, Pepper? 
Uh, it's from one thirty to three thirty via Zoom, um, but I think that the new business section will be towards the end of that. Um, and I am the kind of uh, convener and secretary to the Sentencing Commission, so I'm happy to send that link out <coughs> to everyone, everyone on this meeting. If that's something that you'd like, to, there's a lot of overlap with this group in the Sentencing Commission. Should should I just? Pepper, do you want me to just send you the list for our panel here and you can send it sure. out, sort of, you know, weed out people who are already on the sentencing sure. commission and the rest of us can get. Okay, we'll do. That's I great. Will be yep. In the morning. Okay. So, back to that report. The 2019 one. Does I sent that out? Did anyone have some uh, some thoughts that they want to put out here now? This is this is sort of the planning meeting, and we may, if we don't get anywhere, I have some ideas. But I just thought that if you had some things that would spark some good conversation, um, this would be a good time to put it through. Um, if not, you may want to take it. I sent it out to everyone again. It lives on my hard drive. I mean, I, it's like I have a, an alias on my desktop so I can just pull it up because one never knows. Sheila, you've got a question. Yeah, I think it's maybe more of a comment slash question about my thoughts on the report. So I started going through the report again. And I was a little bit hesitant because I didn't want to like rehash everything in this space. And then people would be like, what are you doing? <laughs> and so, but I think that's um, a little bit of an opportunity that's being given of, of what we, what has been written. What do we want to extend on is what I'm understanding. Yeah. What do we, what have, what has shifted even potentially um, that might change a little bit or alter a little bit of our thinking or ideas or things like that. So, okay. So if that's one of the questions, so something to help spark, um, I haven't, um, just for transparency, I haven't read through the whole thing again, um, but I have been going through it. And one of the first things that came to mind was I felt like when we were writing that re report, we were very focused on the adult side of things and not on the juvenile. And therefore, we didn't operate in that lens and navigating that narrative as much. And so therefore, DCF wasn't, uh, as, and as an entity and juvenile, wasn't represented as much. And and I know that I'm part of a group that's really working to establish an, an, a, a statewide ombudsman office that will be for families and children, specifically with oversight and accountability to DCF. And I know that in this specific report, we talk about the Human Rights Commission being that role for us, that that would be the most appropriate, the words we use is most appropriate entity, acknowledging that they have nowhere near the resources in order to do that. And it's still within a current system that exists, even though that is said to be independent. So I'm just wondering if we can shift that conversation into, um, again, a statewide ombudsman office outside of the Human Rights Commission that, again, will have oversight and accountability, such as what people are already working on within the state um, that's aligning with um, DCF and really mirroring those two entities. Since we're talking about the juvenile justice system, we're talking about the adult system, there's no reason to necessarily reinvent the wheel, even even though this is more in the sphere of child protection and family and whatever, I think that there is um, support potentially to shift that to more than just that. And I just wanted to put that out there to the group. It sounds like that might be something that after next month, when we have this big meeting that we've suddenly planned, that that might be a good idea to have some of the people that you're working with come like in March, come to our, to us and have a conversation about that? Is that something that you could pull? Um, yeah, that might be something that um, could happen. That's a possibility, yes. Okay, that sounds like a good idea to, to start working. That's one place to go. Great. I like that. Thank you. And then I just had a question about how... Um, 
so again, I'm just going to be super transparent. I'm a really busy person and I don't have time to be in everybody's calendar pockets. And so I know that we get these emails. Hey, somebody's asked me to testify and all these different things. I'm just wondering if there's any type of a more succinct way of having this um, in more layman terms and more succinct so we can offer this to the public like these are the committees that our DAP is directly interfacing with and this is why these are the representatives and these are the potential meetings or hearings that we might be called to to testify about like I'm just wondering if there's it's just so in this fast pace um and I understand that that's the way it works and that's actually what I'm trying to dismantle here and create a different culture if that isn't obvious is that clearly that it doesn't work for most people and doesn't work for the people who are most impacted to be able to show up in that in that space and to be able to do that. And so I'm just, not only for myself, but for others that I represent here on the committee, I'm just wondering if there are ways that even the state, not necessarily us doing the labor, but the state could um, make this more accessible to us on the panel as well as to the general public. I'm not the person to answer that, sadly. Um, I, I am keeping up the, I mean, and you already know this, Sheila. I mean, I, I'm keeping up the best I can. I get told and then I send out an email and I can certainly alter my practice around that, but I'm not sure what that would look like. Um, this is David. One one thought that I have is um, that's a great question to ask when we have the Judiciary Committees with us next week, uh, as the legislature really drives some of this uh, very rapid response type of inquiry um, during the legislative session. And I think it's a fair question to ask about how they uh, can work on making schedules in a way that would be more inclusive of people who are most affected by many of the policies they're working on. Okay. All right, we got one question for next month. Uh, anybody else? We are going to be looking at an ombudsman office connected to DCF that Sheila is working on. That is one thing that we are looking at for next steps. Rebecca. I wanted to jump in and second what Sheila said about sort of this, this sort of second look of our report months later and agreeing that when I read it, I thought that the juvenile justice side of it got short shrift completely. Um, and the bottom line is that children are different and how we think about reform should be absolutely focused and we don't do that. And so I think that whether it's bringing in um, this, you know, this group that Sheila just mentioned to talk with us, I think more importantly, it's about just addressing um, what we think should be the top priorities for uh, real reform in that and affecting juveniles and juveniles of color. Uh, the other thing, uh, again, uh, Sheila brought up about the ideal situation where we have real time information that's accessible. Uh, one of the things, and I was while she was speaking, I wanted to try to get in the chat, and this gets beyond my technological abilities, so others will probably be able to beat me to this, but. Uh, I was trying to find the VT Digger recently that reported on the recent Brattleboro report, which I'm sure everyone are here. I just I got the link finally, um, and and here uh, while there's a lot of things to unpack with that article, which is really what's there is an impressive 250 plus page report that uh, a local town um, council and others from that area can better speak to that project, uh, what they produced on very similar overlapping issues that we're working on. But one of the things I was impressed with was that when I reached in there and tracked down the website for Brattleboro and they, the committee, our equivalent effectively in Brattleboro had their own web page that was amazing. And, and David, or maybe this is something we wait for next meeting, but to the extent the AGO can help us, somehow it was a great model. And granted, the other point was that I understand that the members are paid. 
or some of the members were paid. So again, uh, perhaps the difference of what funding um, a committee can bring. But that was, I thought that was a great model, that website. Wow. Uh, I don't know if others have that link handy, can throw it into the chat, but that was great. Great. Um, I would love to actually speak on that. And yes, I, I have it. Um, I've got the report right here. I was part of, I was part of that. So um, here, I'm in, I live in Brattleboro, for those of you who don't know me, and I was a part of the larger coalition, both as an individual and as an organization with the root who is a part of this um, coalition of most impacted people here in Brattleboro that came together to want to address um, community safety. And really the conversation started out as a defund police conversation. But obviously we noticed that that's a little bit um, of a touchy subject for people. And so when you talk about defunding, what do you replace it with? And then when we thought about what it meant for police and we thought about, well, what does that mean? And that is really talking about community safety and whose responsibility is it is for community safety. It's not the police, it's all of ours. So we um, established a coalition of most impacted people, which included um, people of color, youth, um, psychiatrically labeled, people with different abilities, um, queer, trans folks, most um, impacted individuals who came together to talk about their experiences and to help form this. And Shay and Emily, who were the facilitators, you're right, Rebecca, they were paid, but they were paid a very, very little amount, um, very, very little amount. And how they chose to use the rest of their budget was to only take a little bit for themselves to create an extreme amount of, um, they did an extreme amount of work and obviously produced an excellent report. And the rest of the money, they actually paid most impacted people to come to the table to have focus groups and to make sure that they had the resources available to them so that they were able to participate. That's how they chose to use the rest of the money. And so it was a phenomenal process. And actually right now the select board is happening. And if all of you are interested in what's happening, our select board meeting start at 615, but this will probably be later on in the agenda and it will be on the select board um, agenda for the rest of the month. Um, with discussing this and ha having the select board really adopt this and really implement um, the things that were said. But the main point is this is a great example of what we hope other communities will do is really look at um, collecting data, both anecdotal and quantitative and qualitative data that will be from a cross section of the community who are most impacted by these structures and systems and not just be beholden to thinking that we need um, to have the understanding from the whole population because there are um, different people are experiencing these systems and structures differently. And that's really who we want to focus on and prioritize in these conversations. So I really do encourage people to um, look at that report. And I would be happy to figure out how we can use this as, um, as support to support the initiatives that we want to do here on the RDAP. Okay, great. A place to go. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? David, are you getting? I, I I know. Oh, that was another announcement. By the way, we we are there is going to be an intern who's going to take notes for us. They're just not here because college vacation is still happening, so they're not here tonight. So poor David is working like a Phoenician with the <laughs> scribing it down. But um, thank you, David. Did, did you get all this down? Because I just want to, I, I mean, the stuff about some suggestions for directions here. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting this down. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anybody else? This is very productive. I, I had a comment. Um, <clears throat> You know, I'm just looking through the report uh, right yep. now, and uh, there's a number of recommendations. I mean, some that you know was made made by my department um, regarding um, community policing and supervisory training for law enforcement officers um, that are seeking management positions. And it's hard to really keep track of everything that happened last session with respect yeah. to kind of the public safety executive order. Um, from the governor's office and the S-119 and S-124. But it seems like an opportune time. I, I, rem I think I remember um, S-124, I forget the act number right now, um, 
asking the criminal justice training council to be restructured and also to kind of do a self audit of all the courses that they're offering and really think about ways to kind of modernize um, the training council and the, the curriculum. Um, so it seems like this would be a good time, um, especially with some of our recommendations to, I don't know, uh, have a conversation with the training council um, and maybe give them a copy of our report and think about, and maybe this is already happening um, and maybe there are too far down the road already, who knows. Um, but, you know, I, I just think those two, the the recommendations that deal with training of officers, um, you know, it seems like there could be some good, this could be an opportune moment, moment uh, in time to make, to refresh those or maybe add some detail to some of those and, and get them over to the training council. Pepper, can I, let me ask you something. I, I, I get, for a variety of bizarre reasons, I get called by the, that council, the new one fairly frequently right now. Um, can you get something to me that I can give to them along with the report? Yeah. That yeah, can get I, them be, perhaps thinking in this direction? Yeah. And I'll, I'll take a second look at the, the bill that passed that, you know, I think really asked them to audit their curriculum and, and see where they could add to it or subtract from it and add other things. So, um, yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Great, that would be great. Um, I mean, not I'm. I, I was just about to say they're meeting tomorrow. That wasn't like stay up all night and do it, but just <laughs> they're meeting a lot. <laughs> like, yeah. But um, you know, I can. I I'm in touch for a lot of weird reasons, and I can I can facilitate that. I guess that's well. great. Okay. Aton, is, yes. is Jen Furpo still on our committee or, or as far she... as I know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I was just wondering. I mean, yeah, some people, I don't know where she is. some people might have had a conflict, but I was just curious, how, yeah. you know, as the representative of the, of the right. council, that might be a good, it would be good to talk to her. Yes, yeah. it would. Sheila, you had your hand up and then you disappeared. Or maybe you had it up before. I was going to say something, but then I, I forgot what I was going to say. Story of my life. <laughs> Let me know when it comes back. Rebecca. So I'm going to jump in, but if someone uh, who hasn't had a chance to talk, um, please put up your hand. Because I, what I, uh, Sheila's, com people's comments have got me thinking, and so I responded. But what I wanted to share was what I was hoping this uh, uh, this panel would consider as one of our next um, projects, and that was on page nine of the report of our report in 2019. And this was the section dealing with consensus. We got consensus on this issue, and it was under the subheading of discretion, um, police uh, discretion, law enforcement discretion. Uh, I don't know if we defined it so broadly, law enforcement to include prosecution, but I just want to put in that I would hope we focus and drill down on what we mean and unpackage about what we think about checking. I think one of the ways that we could go off from there, uh, and again, putting on this uh, panel's radar, and I'm putting it in the chat, um, between a, a recent series from the VT Digger relating to tarnish, I think titled Tarnish Badges, which was highlighting what is so-called Brady Giglio letters in the legal world, uh, which relates to constitutional obligations, due process to disclose uh, officers who prosecutors no longer uh, deem credible or sufficient to rely on. Uh, they're reporting for prosecutions, and so they disclose these letters. Uh, and so VT Digger um, did a series on this, but it made me think about our report and how we wanted to focus on how to check and build an accountability for law enforcement discretion. That article was just one piece of the puzzle, but I also wanted to put on this panel's radar that I am familiar very vaguely of the work being done in Chittenden, um, Burlington specifically, uh, trying to come up with some ideas on how a community oversight uh, board could work. And I know that's been covered in the press and others on this panel from Chittenden County may want to weigh in. 
Uh, again, do we want to delve into, because uh, I know they've done considerable, that body, oh, I forget the name of that committee, done considerable research uh, looking at what national models are out there for community oversight, uh, review boards, uh, I think there it's police officers, right? Uh, but really getting to the heart of how do we check, uh, how do we check uh, law enforcement abuses and make sure they don't happen. Make sure and beyond training. And I know Pepper, that was a separate uh, issue, but I want to make sure what mine is does it get folded into training because this is different. Uh, so I'll stop there. Yeah. Um, Julio, this is kind of in your bailiwick, isn't it? Um, yeah, I mean, our office is. Um, tasked under S-124 in the last session to try to connect the, di the different dots of um, really energetic and I think thoughtful work that's already been going on in the communities um, regarding um, police oversight. Bennington also has a, a quite useful web page if when I get a free moment I can send the link um, to look at their co community policing initiative, which includes um, collection of testimony or summaries of statements from community members and different police leaders. And um, uh, the legislature asked us to, um, you know, to try to get additional input and, and um, we're in the process now of setting dates for a series of not just community specific, but also subject matter specific forums for groups on different uh, aspects of civilian oversight. Related to that is the in S-124, they asked us to similarly um, uh, collect feedback um, about different approaches to reporting uh, or, or collecting um, complaints of police misconduct. Um, and so that's a process that we're underway. Uh, some of these communities have, um, Brattleboro did not, um, although um, uh, Bennington did and Virgen's uh, has, um, they've come to us for some of the resources on the national models. Um, so the Brattleboro one cites some of the NACOL materials I've cited before as well as a, a study from the, or an overview of civilian uh, oversight from the Police Assessment Resource Center, which is one of these kind of reform clearinghouses. It was actually the place out where I was employed before I came to Vermont. So um, they're, they're familiar resources and, <clears throat> um, and it's so, we're not just going to take input, but we also, and Dave and I were talking about this only was it today or yesterday, Dave? I forget. Um, so many things going on, but we also intend to have a portal that will accumulate some of these materials, put out meeting dates, and also a, a means for people to submit comments, either identifying themselves or anonymously as, as well as with attachments. So if some organizations want to attach a, a, a position paper or an article or something they think is instructive, then we'll do that and make that available. Um, Aton and some of you have heard me in these emergency sessions talking about how much effort you need to put into it and how averse we are, and I am personally, to a very top-down approach. Um, you really need to make the time for people here, and I think you know, what Brattleboro put out, I've only gone through pizza, pieces of it that concern things that I've been working on and, you know, the amount of work um, isn't just useful in terms of putting together content and research, but I think it really demonstrates leadership in the community. And so, and I think there are a lot more Vermonters out there who are willing who, or have been putting in that work and we want to you know, provide different, a variety of different platforms for them to get their ideas together, because I think there'll be some overlapping ideas, and then there'll also be some hard choices to make mm -hmm. in terms of how are you going to spend resources. Some models 
uh, have a lot of positive features, but are also, um, you know, expensive in the short run uh, and have kind of re require institutional and economic commitments. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so we're really looking forward to that. Um, but it's it's very exciting to see work that's come out of a few a few of these committees already. So you were speaking about, I think, a few documents that actually contain some models here. Yeah. Is there a possibility you could get those to me? And sure. I, 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 I think I may have actually linked it to uh, in comments to prior meetings, but sure, yeah. I can do that. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 you, you may have done that, and okay. you know, for someone like me, that means nothing. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, that sounded horrible. I didn't mean that the way that came out. It just means I'm really technologically, yeah, it's just unpleasant. So if you could do that, that would be great. And yeah. I can put um, out the panel. Yeah, and, no, I, I'm happy to do that. There are two from Nicole and one from park i mean there are many but i will give you kind Let's of start there yeah the, the best and i think very accessible give you the 100 foot view great of, and that'll just get models. us on the road that rebecca's suggesting that sheila's suggesting i think that would be really helpful as a starting point um and then we can get uh people in and talk to us in march that would be helpful as well david's writing all this down um good we are making good efforts here one of the other things i want to point out um and this is not sequential is the whole section that we did put in at the bottom of page nine i actually love this section the non-consensus reports where we didn't actually all agree. I love that. And what I think part of what I'm thinking here is let's work at not agreeing. Maybe that's why I liked what Jessica said so much um, was, okay, we've agreed. We agreed on like really broad stuff. Let's like now not agree because I get a sense that if we're not agreeing, we're probably putting in a lot of thinking and a lot of ideas that are pretty radical, and I mean by that at the root. Really, really deep down, really, really important, really fundamental. Um, maybe what we do with that when we get to that moment in these discussions is we do break off into subcommittees and different subcommittees write their reports. Um, I'm inspired by that because that was one of the things I liked very much about Act 148 and, you know, specifically the section that we worked on, um, Section 19, that they were very clear that they wanted dissent in there. Um, you know, we didn't do our job that well. We didn't dissent very well, but, um, but we could have. And I just think that that would be kind of a neat way of going about this and really getting at some real central contradictions in a lot of the stuff that we're talking about. And I think that those need to get out there. I'm not trying to put words in Jessica's mouth. I'm more putting saying that she kind of inspired me when she made that point back last year. And I think that that might be something we want to think about. Just procedurally as we go forward. Sheila. I really like that, Aton. I, 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 I really like that a lot. I just okay. Wanna... I just I just think that'll be fun, and that's just... fun, productive. I think it's interesting too because not only I like the transparency around it mm -hmm. to allow people to know who was in favor of what. I think that's really important, and I think it's really important for discussion. Just because we might have diverging views or not all agree, I think the, co the conversations in the why and sort of understanding the why and unpacking and dis dismantling that and understanding the different perspectives. Like I've really, um, whether I've agreed or disagreed on this panel, I've appreciated how from our different experiences, both professionally and as human beings, the way that we navigate through the world, that we've brought that knowledge to the table. 
And it doesn't mean we have to all agree with it, but to have that understanding and for us to sort of understand each other this past year, I think there's been a lot more of that, even just with the prelude um, of the document that we created and us getting to the point to where we could say white supremacy and white privilege. Three years ago, we weren't having that at all. I want to remind this group, which most of us are the same people, <laughs> that we were not having that at all. And maybe some of us are still feeling some kind of way that that's in the report. But the point is we had enough consensus in order to put that in the report where it was not a thing before. And I think that came about from us developing those relationships, really talking through things and kind of understanding different people's perspectives. And that just because we don't, don't have to agree with everything to make that the right thing to move forward. And I want to remind us of that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anything else anyone wants to put in here? We've got some really good ideas about where to go. Um, and I'm going to rely on David's even very rudimentary notes, and I'm going to start pulling stuff together. I will send out my usual five billion emails, which you'll get RDAP in capital letters, and that Jessica's already smiling. Because uh, <laughs> sometimes it's a little much, um, but I will I will do that to get all of this out to everybody to get us to start thinking, and we're I think we're going to have a fair amount of time to do that because you know next month <laughs> next month's going to be something different. So Julio, I just wanted to point out um, for you and others that I. In the chat, I've already um, provided the three links that you requested. Oh, dear God. I don't even know what chat. Uh-oh. Everyone just went away. Um, oh, look at that. Okay. Is there, is there some way to save this? So it's... Been... I think if you just took it from your cursor yeah. and saved it to a Word document... It would include the hyperlinks, and then you could you could just bookmark the hyperlinks or save it there. But because that's what I did, I just pasted it from an email I had to uh, to this. Uh, fun, fun fact about Teams, though the chat the chats will stay in the meeting on Teams, and and you can refer back to them for a little while. Oh. So if you if you go to the calendar of a previous meeting and you click on chat, you will see all the chats that people put in there in case you like i think hulu you mentioned you put things in a previous chat they do go away after a while but um okay there are ways to do it and um but i'm happy can, to paste or that you can just copy and paste it yeah <laughs> if you if you prefer but i figured it was more efficient at least in the short term to give 20 people access to the links now if they click on them they'll go, they'll be sent to those pages Let's do both. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Because I'll, if I do anything, I'll break it. I know it. Um, great. Other comments, other thoughts? Other thoughts about 2019 report, where it should go next? We are looking at the section on discretion. We are going to be talking about systems of oversight. We are going to be reading documents that Julio has already put in the chat, and he will send those of us who are somewhat of cave people, and we can look for them in different ways that will be on the subject. We are going to be talking about an ombuds what? committee in a way of um that sheila has mentioned that will be working on issues that also come up with dcf we are talking about what am i forgetting david what am i forgetting brattleboro and looking yeah. at their the model that they right. provide in terms of their work right um, so we're and relatedly Mm -hmm. uh, ATO's uh, upcoming work on civilian oversight issues, with who, which Julio has been talking about. And also on that note, I'll just 
let folks know we are, as Julia mentioned, we are going to have a series of forums and we will make sure to publicize those dates to this crew. Uh, and to whatever degree you can spread the word about those, we would certainly be grateful. But we'll, we'll once we get those, once we work on scheduling those, we'll, we'll get that out to you. Great. Okay. I just sent you the, e the email. Uh, yeah, my phone just dinged. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that's a fair amount of work. There's a fair, there's some chunks here of things to be reading. Um, so I'm not feeling like we need to fill out 45 more minutes. I'm feeling like, though, I want everyone to get everything in right now that they want to get in. I don't want to end prematurely, I guess, is what I'm saying. So if someone has some other issues here, some other thoughts, I mean, this obviously isn't the last time. It's the first time. <laughs> so I'm just, you know, I would recommend that everyone, I don't think everyone's had a chance, um, look back over the 2019 report, see what you think. Mark it up, get a red pen out. Cross things out. Do, does anyone do that anymore? I mean, I, thank you. All right. Yeah, me too. I like believe in handwriting. Um, so cross things out. Circle things. You know, write comments in there. Because that's, I, I, that's the only way we're going to be able to do this. If we're, in fact, going to go after that and do this deeper dive. Um, I will get these materials out. Uh, Sheila, you and I can be in touch talking about who we're going to, who we need to invite in March. Sounds great. Uh, okay. Um, I think we're on it. Anybody else have anything? Just so you're just going to be reading folks. It's, I know. Warm, cozy nights in front of the fire. It'll be fun. Um, Anything else anyone wants to add? Can I just offer one? It's not really a comment as much as it is an offer for uh, additional assistance. Sure. Um, if there's anybody looking at these comments related to oversight and want have questions or want follow up on particular types of models or additional information, um, they should contact me. I'd be happy to do that and. If committee members down the road or anybody really from Vermont who's really engaged in it wants uh, an opportunity to talk to people in other cities who are doing the jobs in these entities, um, you know, that may be something we may be able to arrange. I know quite a few people who are either current or former directors or investigators or hearing officers from places like New York, D.C., San Francisco, New Orleans. Um, Baltimore, who, you know, may shed a little light and might tell us about what they like and what they don't like. We're going to seek that input anyway, but um, there's no reason we have to do it. Um, if other people here, are, you know, are, are interested in that, we can probably coordinate it so they're not getting 10 calls. But um, I think that would be, you know, that can that can bring it more to life than reading something on a page if if people have the yeah. time and interest and want to get into that level of, of understanding or, or detail about how these different entities work. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Thank you. Thank sure. you for the offer. So are all these documents, just to be clear, are all these documents going to be shifted from the chat and put into the email titled like homework for reading? with the various in your contact, Julio, and anybody to contact if we have any direct question follow-up. So we're not like going to you, Aton, ask you questions that you don't know how to answer. And, <laughs> we're, not, and we're not like, shoot, we didn't um, copy and paste the chat. Where's all the homework? Um, is all of this, David, or somebody is, is, are, is going to put it in that kind of format? And basically that's an ask that I'm asking. Can somebody do that to make it more streamlined? Yes, ma'am. It's going to go into an email that I will send out. that all right? And Aton, this is Rebecca. I just sent you and Julio just for brevity's sake. I, 
the document including research and models that the Burlington folks uh, had researched in Julio. I don't know if that's duplicative, but for what it's worth, uh, I wanted that it. for. No, it, it's it's not. I mean, what I sent was more of an, an examination of different models with examples from different parts of the country. Because, I mean, there are three, arguably four different fundamental models of oversight. And these, these really are a way to introduce people to those models and, and to look at examples of how they're set up. Um, and the, two of the three that I, that I included, um, I, I think also have links to the entity's webpage. You can go read their annual reports about how they investigate cases, what their outcomes are, and so forth. So it's more of a, a introduction really than Burlington is more of a concrete proposal. And there are many of them that have, of the Burlington example that have been out this last year, like Pittsburgh's been working on it. There are probably a dozen places in New York state that are working on similar, similar issue, you know, from Schenectady to Poughkeepsie. So, I mean, there's lots out there, but I just tried to do something that was compact and, and I think a good introduction. If you read these, then when you look at other policies, you'll see where it fits into, um, the, you know, the different types of models. I would just add um, that the document I sent is is from the Burlington. I know they, they introduced a specific model, but embedded in this just uh, they, they they seem to summarize their research on the on the models too and group them as to certain types and also provided links to the particulars. So there might be some overlap there to the extent that there's something different. It's interesting that it's in this document, it's a committee sort of shakeout of reviewing others, or at least one person's research task to present to the committee. Yeah, oh. the, I'm looking at it now, and they do, they are re referring to some of the same materials that I cited. Right. Okay. So, yeah. I, I will gather and 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 digest and, re and send out in kind of a digest form with David's help. Thank you, David. <laughs> Uh, anything else? It's a good start. It's a very good start. It's a great start. That was fun. This is the most fun I've had all day. Any, well, as we said at the beginning of the meeting, our next meeting is the 9th of February. I will send out the soft invitation to House and Senate judiciaries. You can expect that that will be really the focus of the meeting next time. I will keep you up to date um, as that comes closer as to what their expectations and hopes may be. Um, if you have some, I should be able to put them back in the opposite direction. Um, so I will keep you in line on that, and I will, in the next few days, digest all of this and get it back out to everybody in a digested form. Um, if there is nothing else, then someone can, you know, like, make a motion to adjourn. Or we could have more discussion. Or, hey, Tom, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay, we have a motion to adjourn, and I have a second. I'll second that. May I see all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Got it. All abstaining? We are adjourned. Thank you all very much for a great meeting. And Chief, your hand is up. Is there something? No. Okay. Um, and thank you very much for a great meeting. Again, thank you all so much for the support. I mean that. I just, that was, it's just, it's lovely. And, um, and thank you for all the work. Thank you for all of your work. And um, I will see you all in a month, if not sooner. So. Hey, Tom, don't forget to yeah. um, send us 
your comments from yesterday for those of us who didn't get to hear them. Please. I will I will work on that. Yes. Okay. I will work on that. Will do. Okay. Good night. Everyone. Bye. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.